welcome everyone to another Marvel Crisis Pro Call unboxing. So today we are unboxing Star Lord. Now Star Lord has actually been around for a while. So Star Lord made his first appearance in Marvel Comics in 1976, but of course we will know him from the Guardians of the Galaxy films. Uh, but he didn't actually in the comics join the Guardians of the Galaxy until 2000. And eight, so he has been around for a while, and his story has changed a little bit. But let's see what's on the back of the box. No one can read that, Ross. Let's zoom. Nope, wrong way, idiot. Choice of two, always get the wrong one. So, Peter Quill is Star Lord's real name, and he was originally born on Earth. So his mum is actually human and his mum is Meredith Quill um, whereas his dad his dad um, in the films is actually um, basically a god he is a celestial and his name is Ego and um, he is played by uh, Kurt Russell um, the, the guy's a legend. Kurt Russell, I mean, he's been in big trouble in Little China, things like that. Just solid work. Solid work. Um, but in the Guardians of the Galaxy 2, the Volume 2, he was Peter Quinn's dad. Now, in the comics, he actually had a different father. So, uh, I'm probably going to butcher his name, but it's something like uh, uh, Joe Sun, um, who was also a non human. And this guy was a bit of a badass, um, whereas Ego really was all Ego. Um, so this guy basically looks like a space pirate, and he's really cool, wields a pistol, uh, and has a coat that's very much like Star Lords. So there's a lot, a lot of similarities, and you can see where Marvel obviously thought in the Guardians of the Galaxy films they would still kind of base him on that. Um, but yes, the comic book is slightly different, or comic books are slightly different from the films. Very much like Rocket and Groot's uh, origins, things like that. But um, this guy doesn't have any real special powers, per se. Uh, in the films, obviously, he is part celestial, which who knows where they're going to go with that. Uh, and that's why he was able to hold the Power Stone for a little bit longer hold one of the Infinity Stones a little bit longer because most mortals would be destroyed. Uh, but this guy mostly uses tech. So he has um, a helmet, a space helmet, um, which protects him from the elements. Uh, he has twin pistols, he has rocket boots, quite a few little gadgets. But we'll get to that in a second. Enough of the fluff, what do you get in the box? So in the box, on this one here, we get one Star Lord miniature. You'd be pretty miffed if you didn't get that. A base, and like most Marvel uh, Marvel kits, you will get four bases to choose from: an affiliation card, a crisis card, a character stat card, two team tactics cards, an affinity gem card, and fourteen tokens. So let's get into the box, shall we? So I was right. We have four bases. Uh, so the four pretty standard bases that you get in the kit. Don't forget you have a plastic cup and a um, crinkled up drinks can there. So I have seen people use these bases and chuck away the sprue, not realizing those two items were there. But they are there to decorate your base as you wish. Now I have kept loads and loads of them. So uh, I might stick a load on Rocket's base actually, because he is a trash panda. But what have we have here? That is Peter's coat, leg, rocket jet, his pistols, and a load of little fiddly bits that I probably will drop. Which are pretty nice. Now you notice there is a few repeats there just in case you do drop them actually. Which is pretty good. A couple of ones, a couple of fours, a couple of thirteens. So um, yeah, it's almost like they know me, and they think fiddly little bit, you're gonna drop it. 
It is good that they do have spares though, all joking aside, just in case. And they'll do that on every sprue, but uh, this is number, he says checking, 18. So it was one of the first ones after the box. So the destructions are fairly easy to read. So the newer ones um, have a QR code. Uh, these are not numbered, just the steps are numbered, so it's fairly clear what you're doing. But just in case, take a very good look. You have a load of tokens. So you have the Guardians tokens, Bleed, Slow, Shock, and these, which we'll get into in a second. What are these, Ross? What are these? Well, I'll tell you in a second. So, this is the card that comes in the box, but like I said, it is issue, forgotten already, 18, had to check, memory like a sieve. He has changed since. So what we're going to do, we are going to throw this away. And these are his new rules. So he has had a bit of an update. I will tell you what has changed and what is on the new card. So Star-Lord, he was a big old three across the board on defense. He still is. So it's three physical, three energy, three mystic defense. He has kept the same health as well. So he's still on that six health. Still cost three to have him on a team. He is size two and he's a medium movement. So nothing's changed there at all. And he has his element gun, which is still range four, still strength five. So you roll in those five dice. Doesn't cost anything to use this. And after the attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the amount of damage dealt, which is exactly the same. His next attack is also a energy attack. It is full auto. So it's range four, seven dice for strength, and it costs three, so nothing's changed there. And he has, on our wild, elemental blast. After his attack is resolved, for each wild in the attack pool, that's each wild in the attack pool, the defending character gains one of the following conditions. Bleed, shock, slow, and stun. So, nothing's changed there, and that's where we're getting the tokens. The shock, the bleed, yada yada yada. He has his Guardian's affiliation, called Winging It. During the power phase, choose up to three allied characters. Give them each a wing it token. While a character or wing it token is attacking, defending, or dodging, he may spend a wing it token to modify the dice step roll. So you get to roll or re-roll up to two of its dice at the end of the round, removing all wing it tokens from the character. So that has changed a little bit from the original dice. It has cleared it up a little bit. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, next, he has gained Hit and Run. You've never heard this before. It's an action. Like most characters that have had Hit and Run, this reads pretty much exactly the same. Cost two energy. This character immediately makes an attack action followed by a move action. This superpower can only be used once per turn. So it's pretty good, it's kind of like a charge, you are combining a move and an attack of sorts. If you want to, why wouldn't you? Spending too power for it, so why wouldn't you? Next he has his first of his innate abilities, Plucky Attitude. When attacking, if this character rolled no hits, it may re-roll all of its current attack dice. When defending, if this character rolled no shields, it may re-roll all of its defense dice. Really, really nice. So if you get those moments, like me, when you've got absolutely nothing, at least you can do that. That's pretty good. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Makes him a bit more reliable. So that hasn't changed from previous. And also he has Flight and Gem Bower 
power. So he's gained hit and run basically, and winging it is tidied up on the healthy side. On the injured side, it doesn't look like a lot has changed. He still drops down to 5 health, and all of his abilities look the same. So, in a nutshell, this guy's not bad. He wants to get enough energy to do full auto majority of the time, and you're hunting for that wild, or wilds, should I say, because each wild you can throw out more conditions, which is really, really nice. So if you've got someone out there, um, let's say Thanos has given him more dice, or um, Baron Mordo, just increases those chances of getting those wilds, for example. Really, really, really nice. And his winging it ability is nice, because it doesn't say choose three other characters. He can give that to himself. So, give it to himself. You can reroll two of your dice, and you still end up with no hits. You can still reroll on the attack. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So, you really, really are increasing your chances. With those seven dice, by the way, on full auto, try to get those elements off. And still, seven dice, range four, that's not bad. So even if you're not getting those conditions and you're doing damage, that's pretty tasty. It's not bad. That's not bad at all. All right, next we have the cards. So if you didn't know already, Guardians of the Galaxy consists of Gamora, Nebula, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Drax the Destroyer, Ronan the Accuser, and Angela. If you didn't know, we do have a mission. We do have this extraction. So, like I said, it's an extraction. It's 19 points. Panic grips city as evacuation efforts continue. Place four citizen civilian tokens as indicated on map B. Place score one victory point for each civilian held in the cleanup phase, it's pretty nice. So interact, you pick up the, the civilian. Okay, a character cannot hold one more, more than one citizen. During its activation, a character holding a citizen may evacuate the citizen by spending six power. The character controlling uh, the citizen immediately scores two victory points and that's removed from the game. So. If you're in a position where you think you're going to get overrun, for example, and someone's going to take that token off of you, and you've got six power, spend it, and then you, you've got two victory points, and that person who's trying to take that token can't get it from you anymore, and they can't score anymore. Is it worth, if you've got your four citizens out there, grabbing all four at any point, spending the six energy to just get rid of each one at a time, so six energy in one character, six energy in another character. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, because it does mean your opponent can get them, and you've got that in the bank. But for me personally, I would like to get someone at the back of the table. Let's say you've got that really long mover, like Baron Zemo. He's grabbed that civilian at the beginning of the turn. He moves back in the back corner for the rest of the game, or even Toad. Toad's great at doing that. You just hide there farm that VP, but it does give you the option. It does give you the option of just going, do you know what, I'm going to spend six. And that's it. Civilian out, and <laughs> you get the points. Right, so next we have the team tactics cards. So the first one, the crew of the Milano. Guardians of the Galaxy, it's an active card. Any number of allied Guardians of the Galaxy may spend one power to play this card. Each enemy character that spends power removes all special conditions and cannot suffer special conditions this round. That's nice. I really do enjoy removing special conditions. Uh, using X-Men have a similar ability. It's pretty nice. But with X-Men, you get it for free. Just saying. Rocket Boots. Rocket Boots, unaffiliated, an allied character may play this card. This character gains the flight innate superpower this round. At the end of the round, roll one dice. If the result is a blank, this character gains the stun special condition. 
If it's a skull, the character gains the stacker special condition. On any other results, the character may advance small. So it gives you flight. Yippee. Uh, if you really, really need it. But there's a good chance, if you're me, it's going to be stun or stagger. It's a card I probably will not be playing. And the final one is an Affinity Gem Power. Now it's the first one I actually own. Physically own. And it costs one. And what does that symbol mean? That's right. It costs an extra one on your character creating side on your roster. So if you've got a Star Lord, he normally costs three to have on your team. If you decide to put that on him, it costs four. And he's fixed like that. So if you decided you're having power on Star Lord, before you put him on the table, he's still got to have the power gem. You can't take it off. You can't decide at the last minute. It, it's there. When he's in your roster and it says he's got the power, he's got the power gem. That's it. It's baked in then. But it is innate and ability. It is passive. It's there all the time. During the power phase, this character gains two additional power instead of the normal one for having an affinity gem. That's brilliant because his full auto costs four. So like in his first turn, let's say move up, um, element gun, you gain a few, gain a few power. In the following turn, you could full auto twice. So so nice. Because that'd be eight power. <laughs> and uh, you'll get three again in the following turn. So all you need is two on that initial hit. And there you go, you got full auto twice in the second turn. If it works out. If it works out. I think he's really, really good. Um, I've never used Guardians before, because I've never had him before. Um, but I do have Rocket and Groot, and I love those guys. I think they're wicked. So I will use a mini Guardians list. So it's those three, and maybe a couple others, um, to make up Guardians. I don't have... Uh, Gamora or Nebula, I do think they look quite fun. I was tempted to pick them up because using Mr. Sinister quite often at the moment, I really want to find a two threat character with his cloning banks to bring onto the table. I think Nebula would be pretty nice, or she doesn't interact with any of the objectives, but she's just a murder bot. Quite literally, she's pretty damn good at that. But yeah, I just thought Star Lord would be fun. Uh, can't wait to do a bit of airbrushing on the rocket boots just to make that pop a little bit as well. I think it's a fun model. And yes, I am addicted to this game. So I didn't need him. I didn't need to start collecting another affiliation. But he's a cool model. I've got rocket and group. Why not have a bit of fun? They're not terribly expensive, these miniatures. And you do get a lot in a box. So I picked this one up, brand new, for about £20. Obviously prices do vary. And you do get a fair bit in the box. You get the card, you get the tokens, obviously the miniature, and you get the team tactics cards, and sometimes you get a mission card. So it's not all bad. Yes, it's 20 quid for one model, but you never have to buy another Star Lord, do you? Alright, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope this made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. And then you're looking after your fine selves. Stay safe, everyone.